So I just thought I'd put together this quick video of um, you know, useful techniques that I've sort of come across along my me, me Z modeling journey. And the first one, um, I'm actually, this is an apology <laughs> to anyone that's been following any of my other tutorials. As you know, if the tutorials I created, I created them whilst you know I was learning myself, so um, it was almost a learning tool as much for me as anybody else. So the first one I do owe people an apology because um, if you watch the videos, you know, say I wanted to move um, this vert here. And the one behind it, and um, you know, you could use uh, symmetry, but let's say there was, um, I wanted to move all of them, or for whatever reason, I wanted to move them orthographically, and um, the slide function wouldn't work, you know, if I wanted to move them all the way through the mesh, for whatever reason. And um, what I'd do is, you know, I'd drag out a mask, and um, invert the mask, and then I'd move them around with the transpose line. And a lot of people probably thought this was, um, and I did myself as well at the start, until I got used to it. I thought it was an awful way to, to have to move things around coming from 3D Max. But thanks to uh, Nicholas Fox, who's posted a um, comment there in one of the videos and pointed this out, he, he only discovered it himself the night before. He posted a comment, and it's a huge, um, huge tip and something that I, I can't believe I didn't... Um, find was there before because it would save people a lot of time you know and basically all it is is and um, you just set your move vert action to infinite depth and now it'll move you know the, the depth um, will be affected all the way through the model and um, that's it's just a, it's a huge thing you know and you could even you, know, you can do it on the edges um, which was um, if you were just using that's why if you were using slide and let's say you know you wanted to slide this one in the middle isn't going to move if you had more edge loops in in here in between you know that's why I was doing doing it like this um so as I say apologies um and that's that's pretty much all move infinite depth and very very handy and thanks again to uh, Nicholas Fox. So the second tip is um, another thing that I missed in Z Modeler was you know when you Q mesh um, polygon it'll extrude out along its face normal. So you know I missed being able to extrude along the axis rather than always along the normal. So let's say um, I'll just Q mesh a single poly and slide that edge back and we want the Q mesh again so if we wanted the Q mesh straight up or straight out you know um, it's going to go along the normal and then you'd have to move it into position so um, we can actually just use the extrude function that's already in ZBrush before ZModeler came along so I can just uh, use our mask mask a single poly mask it, invert the mask and move to and then just control shift and we can extrude along the normal or sorry along the axis along your transpose line so you know you could set this to whatever angle you want snap it and control shift so yeah just don't forget that's there um, and always has been in the last couple of releases before Z modeler So let's say in this next tip, you know, we have an area of geometry here that um, we want to be uh, perfectly flat, you know, but it's messy. The topology is messy for whatever reason you're modeling and you notice that it's, it's all up and down and um, you want to flatten it out. So, you know, you could clip it, but this geometry is in the way. So um, one way to do it, there's two ways to do it, I found anyway. Um, so we can just use the mask again. Uh, mask a polygroup island, mask it out, invert the mask, and use a transpose line, and just hold shift, drag it up, and we can just clip it and drag it back down. And instead of guessing here, dragging it back down, and um, we can just come down to display properties, flip, and now we can see inside 
so we can just line it back up where it was and then just hit flip again and now it's uh, it's perfectly flattened out so there's another way to do that as well um, and that is you can just uh, control shift to isolate that and you can see here it's all up and down and we can just use move transpose and just drag out transpose line and shift and just drag that and we can scale it down flat the same as you would in uh, um, scaling uh, faces till they're planar in a traditional uh, 3D package so that's uh, that's two ways to do that um, whichever way you know comes in handy for whatever job you're doing so this next tip is basically just um, one of the techniques we're using the last tip um, same same idea so say for instance you know you have all these verts all over the place you want to you want to straighten out that uh, that row, so we can just mask off the verts you want to straighten out, invert the mask, and just use a transpose line and just uh, shift drag on the top circle and just straighten them out, and then we can just shift drag in the middle circle, and you know that's just another it's a way to straighten them out. Um, so the next tip. Um, it's not really a tip, I suppose. It's uh, just a few people have left comments um, asking about the align edge tool. Um, not really understanding what it does. So basically, it's going to take um, edges in a row or a loop, sorry, in a ring or a loop between the two edges you specify, and it's going to straighten them out based on um, these settings. So it's um, it's interactive as well. So you can change all these um, the modifiers around and then drag. In, in the canvas as you're applying the action so let's say we click this as the first edge and click and hold the second and you know it's interactive then we can we can move the mouse and change how it's applied based on uh, these modifiers and targets and the last tip here is uh, just using the Good old smooth brush to uh, tidy up messy topology. So you know, let's see, you have all this kind of mangled up, and you want to uh, just average out the vert. We can just use a smooth brush. Um, so I always have masked by polygroups here on the UI. You find that in the brush palette, auto masking, uh, masked by polygroups. Um, very handy to have uh, close to hand. Um, you know, so you could isolate this. And smooth it out. Or you could just uh, whack a uh, mask with polygroups up to 100 and smooth out and not worry about affecting um, the surrounding topology. And that'll just average all that out for us and flatten it out. And it's also another way, um, f you know, showed earlier on. Um, because it, it's it's pinned over here really on these verts so at the center it's all going to average out and flatten itself out so it's I suppose another way of um, flattening out messy topology like the other two methods I showed earlier on and I suppose that is the last of the uh, these kind of quick tips so if anybody has any more um, or people want to add to them or just add it below in the comments you know these are just few bits and pieces of things I've picked up and, and thought I might as well just put them out there in case um, other people hadn't uh, picked up on them yet. Alright then, that's it for this one. So, cheers, thanks, good luck.